This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode of Do Go On is brought to you by Planet Broadcasting's partnership with Care Australia and Everyday Hero, supporting women and girls living in extreme poverty around the world. To donate to this campaign, please visit www.planetbroadcasting.com or click the link in the show notes below. Man, I don't know what happens from here. I don't listen to our sort of theme. Fades out, maybe. <laughs> Dave talks. No, I think it just goes back to the piano bit. Dun, 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 dun. And then you go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast called Do Go On. We are back in the studio, baby. My name is Dave Warnicky, and in the studio with me is Jess and Matt. Hello. Ooh, hello. hello. Isn't it great to be back? I was going to say indoors. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of outdoor <laughs> park gigs. Parkour yeah. gigs. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm puffed. <laughs> But I'm ripped. And rad. Yeah. yeah. Puffed, I'm, ripped, rad and buff. I'm so cool now. Mm. Parkour. Parkour cool, which is a different kind of cool. Parkour. Parkour. I think the only way to make it cool is to um, pronounce it as I did for about five years as Park Hour. Park Hour. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> park Hour. Guys, I'm just going to go uh, do some Park Hour. And God. that didn't get the my peers' respect. Weird. But then I said Parkour. Suddenly, they were on board with my lifestyle choices. And oh. suddenly, all of, uh, you looked down and you were wearing a cool leather jacket. Ooh, on my, yeah, looking down. I was <laughs> wearing it around my waist. Dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a leather condom? Leather jacket. Yeah, yeah I call uh, condoms leather jackets. Oh, I don't like that at because all. Because safe sex is cool. Safe sex is cool. Thank you. But they shouldn't be leather. Oh, okay. Beg That's, to differ. Because there's different if, kind of skin. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, sorry. this has gone awry yeah, real quick. Sorry. Real quick. But it is nice to be back in the stupid old studio. It is good to be back. That's Very not good a derogatory term. We're not saying the studio is stupid and old. That is the name of the... I mean, it's more of a coincidence. ...the production company <laughs> but, that we are part of. Yes. Well, it's good to be back. It's good to but be I back. But I honestly had so much fun of those live shows over the last month. Maybe they the, were. Yeah, so much fun. I've, I've enjoyed all of them, to be honest, but those... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Those last four were fucking sick. I'm so pumped to do more live shows. Yeah, absolutely. They were they were absolutely they were awesome. They yeah, were people so were so nice. The crowds were into it yeah. and up for it straight from the start, which just makes it so much uh, you know easy to have fun. And yeah, we, thanks to everyone that came out. We did uh, we did film them as well, which we're sort of releasing on. Uh, yeah, we're we're definitely releasing a few of them publicly, and we might hold some of them for patrons. I haven't really figured that out. Yeah, yeah. I think they they should go to the Patreon supporters first. Certainly. Anyway, <laughs> I um, I, if and I know some people don't like listening to the live ones, but we we make a lot of effort to get it sounding really good. So if you're afraid of going to listen to some crappy um live recordings, it's not like that at all. It sounds great, sweet audience. Yeah. Um, good vibes. So go go back and and the reports were all really interesting as well. I reckon they were four of our. Best reports from this year. Yeah, very varied, but a lot of death, which the audience loved. They the loved audience it. loved the Literally death. Literally cheering for death. Um, and we've got a we've got a new um, a new thing where we're going to try and get into the episodes quicker, into the reports quicker in the studio. Okay, episodes. yep, good point. Um, but before we do, I'd love oh, to plug God. my live show in Sydney uh, on the twelfth of May, and you can get a discount code if you go to uh, buy the tickets uh, at mattstewartcomedy dot com slash gigs. Fuck. Every time. Not fuck. Don't put fuck at the end there. Just gigs. <laughs> slash gigs. And uh, use the code do go on. You just have to follow a link there. It'd be so good to see you there in Sydney. But Jess, what, what's the question to get us onto a topic here today? I'm glad you asked, Matthew. My question for you, gentlemen, is uh, whose real name Ooh. is Natalia Nikolaevna Zak? Zakarenko. Oh, I like these ones because I know all the ones I'm thinking like Elton John's got a different name, but I don't think it's that. <laughs> okay. Um, Narrowing it down early. That's interesting. Maybe. I will confirm nor deny. What about like the Bob Blue Dylan. Power Ranger? Blue Power Ranger. I don't think that was their birth name. Blue Power Ranger. Good point. 
Is, is there a blue not one? the blue Power Ranger. Okay. Is it Natalie Portman? It is not Natalie Portman. Well, the way sure. she said it is yes. made yeah, me think it is. that was the end of the comp. It's no, not the, Natalie Portman. It is Natalie Portman. Is what I would say if it was Natalie Portman, but it's, it's not. Uh, would, it's a uh, Natalie. Oh, Nath- Natalie Bassingthwaite. It is not Natalie Bassingthwaite, although she comes up in this, weirdly. What? Natalie what? Imbruglia. Not Natalie Imbruglia. Not Australian. Not Natalie related Bassing- to Neighbours at all? Not related to Neighbours. Were you kidding about Bassingthwaite coming no. up? No. How is that possible? I on, know. Which, who is an Australian singer? What are the host? odds of that? Okay. Uh, na- I'm trying to think of some more Natalies I know. So we were mentioning before how our live shows had a lot of death in them. This mm. one has a death as well. Is it Natalie? A rather famous death. Uh, Princess Diana. No. Her name was Diana. I'm, I'm fairly certain. And this one's name is Natalie. Thinking actress. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think of a fa- Natalie Kidman. Famous Kidman. Natalie's that died. What's Kidman's name? Nicole. Nicole. Okay. And, and she's not dead. Okay. So an American. American. Natalie Bassingthwaite. Again, Imagine no. if you changed your name to Bassingthwaite. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. It's a shocker. You're saying it. It's Bassingthwaite. Do you want me to tell you? Is yeah. she at all related to the rogue twi- traders, twaiters? The rogue twaiters, <laughs> no. Is, no. What about a, a, an actress who famously drowned? Jeff Buckley. Drown? Yeah, yeah, he did. Went for a dip. Got did caught he? Up, caught up in a. Why did not? Why did I know that? That's weird. A boat's. Uh, I just wave. assumed drugs. <laughs> it could have. I, I, I think very it might, might have been both. May have been drinking. I believe. Okay, drinking. great. Um, so it was this Natalie? Actually, I think he was fully clothed as well. It's always hard to swim in your clothes. Um, if you know, if you're not sure, can you give me a letter? This must be fucking yeah, tedious. Yeah, yeah. Let's just, just say, give it to us. Do you want the letter? No, I have the letter. Give you might get it. W. Walsh. No. White. What's this? Wood. Wall. Natalie Wood. Don't know who that is. You don't know Natalie Wood? Was she from Popstar Season 2? Yeah. <laughs> Was she <laughs> from Scandalous? So Scandalous. So you don't know. If you don't know her, that means you don't know the story. No. no. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, and l- oh. I thought you would know. Can I Oh, can I ask if it's got anything to do with the guy from Austin Powers? Uh, Robert Wagner? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's all I know. But I don't I know. couldn't remember if he was in Austin Powers or not. Was he? Number two. Right, okay. It was the original number two, I think. Anyway, I like how Dave doesn't know and I only know. Yeah, this is great. I, I would have thought Robert you Wagner. would have known this one. Oh, excellent. Okay, this is exciting because this is a pretty famous case. So I'm, I feel like an idiot over here. Yeah, I, I'm. that's what I'm thinking. That's I know what I'm James implying. Woods. That's what I'm implying. Not related. Not related. Because her last name is Zaharenko. Oh, of course. And Wood. And then Wood. Okay, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you firstly. Uh, this was suggested by uh, by Henry, and that what he said his his topic was the drowning of Natalie Woods. Spoilers. Sorry, I figured you'd know that because again, very famous case. Well, you didn't know Jeff Buckley drowned, so. But I knew he's dead. Okay, and I'm, I knew he, he existed. existed. <laughs> I feel like I feel a loss because I've discovered this woman exists, and then I immediately lost her. Yeah, you yeah. actually lost her, and then you discovered her. <laughs> yeah, that's harder. God, reality's tragic, isn't it? Like I knew, I think I knew before I heard Jeff Buckley music that he had died. So when I, you know, loved his music, I was like, oh, well, at least I know he's dead. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to now find that out and be sad, you know. I don't, I'm not like Googling like, I wonder if he's touring Australia soon. Oh, my God. Mm, that is just, it's like they, they say it's better to have lost and loved than never to have lost at all. Is that what they? No. Is that Descartes? I think that was Descartes. It was one of the carts. Aaron Carter. Aaron Cart. Sorry, I always confuse those two. Take Cart and Aaron Carter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Natalia Nikovina Zakarenko was born on the 20th of July, 1938. She was born in San Francisco to Russian and Ukrainian immigrant parents. Um, her mother was Maria um, and her father was Nikolai. Good Nik- names. Nikolai is a good name. Nikolai Devidenko. Oh, a great tennis player. <laughs> is that who her dad was? No. Okay. Nikolai, quite a common name. Huh. But also Devidenko. The tennis player, yes. Wow. <laughs> that is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I've lost you early. There's um, so many coincidences in this story. Nikolai was the son of two Ukrainians from um, Kharkiv, which was then part of the Russian Empire. Um, and Nikola was, uh, sorry, and Maria was born in the um, Russian Far East. Uh, as a child, Nikolai. China. 
Well, that comes into it later. As a child, he immigrated with his mother and two brothers to Montreal and then later to San Francisco where he worked as a, as a labourer and a carpenter. The city by the bay, the city that never sleeps. No. Isn't that London? <laughs> I get it all switcheroo. Uh. <laughs> Firing at all cylinders, boys. I, I cannot. I, I cannot. See how this is coming back to battling slate. I was just I know. Exact thinking, I know. Good luck to you, Jess. Good luck. Yeah, I'm going to blow your fucking minds. Oh, fun fact at the end or something. Nah. Early. Anyway. Um, how is that possible? It, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Decades before she was born. Amazing. Um, Natalia's mother, Maria, had moved to China with her mother after the death of her father. There you go. And I in, predicted that as well. Said, he said that. And in China, Maria married a, a guy called Alexander Tatulov. Um, and the had tennis a, player. <laughs> and had a daughter, Olga, in 1927. Now, somewhere between 1927 and 1938, couldn't find a lot of information, uh, Maria ended up in America and married Natalie's father, Nikolai. I don't know. There was a, there was a first marriage. She had, already had a daughter, Olga. Right, right, right. In China. In China, and but, then somehow ended up in America. Love it. It's great. I, I, I did multiple Googles to try and find what happened there. Nothing. Um, in her youth, Maria had dreamed of becoming an actress or a ballet dancer, which were ambitions she passed on to her middle daughter, Natalia. Bit of a forewarning about <coughs> Maria here. Big old stage mum. Ooh, tiger mum. Oh, yeah. She is terrifying. Look hot, little woman. <laughs> Whatever I said last week. <laughs> Look hot, a young lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Natalia, or Natasha, she was ref- often referred to by her family. Confusingly. Because it's like the Russian version. Ah. Natalia isn't Russian enough. Natasha. So she's Natalia, she's Natasha, she's a lot of things. Um, <laughs> she's hip, she's in. She's happening. <laughs> Get with the program, people. (laughs) Um, She later said, My mother used to tell me that the cameraman who pointed his lens out at the audience at the end of the Paramount newsreel was taking my picture. I'd pose and smile like he was going to make me famous or something. I believed everything my mother told me. Um, Natalia was noticed by members of her film crew during a shoot in downtown Santa Rosa. Sounds like her mum wasn't lying after all. Yeah. Well, when she sort of got into acting, some studio execs, some big wigs, you'd, your type, Dave. Sydney Scheinberg. Sydney Scheinberg. Dave does wear big wigs. Yeah, it's yeah. weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird. Because he's got hair. Yeah, I know. He's got that hat hair <laughs> <laughs> from the wig. <laughs> from always wearing a wig. <laughs> This is natural. This is only, only privately he wears a wig. I never go down in public. <laughs> Take the, the wig, wig off, but I don't adjust my hair. I just let that wig hair. That's what I do. I wear a helmet <laughs> at all times. And then when I leave the house, I take off my helmet. Um, I've got a real sweaty yeah. top, <laughs> and then it poofs out at the ears. Well, n- that's most a people, good look. Most people don't know that 90% of accidents accidents happen within the home, so yeah. that's why you should always wear a helmet at home yeah. yes. just I've, in case. In the bed. I've never fallen out of bed. Well, I have, but I didn't hurt myself because I was wearing a wig. I was going to say. A padded wig. How <laughs> why am I knee? Should have been wearing a <laughs> knee wig. <laughs> Do you want a knee wig? I've got some. Got some here. <laughs> Dave, what's wrong with hairy knees? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't hurt my knee in years. <laughs> That's what it wasn't. Bigfoot wasn't a, a hoax. It was just a very safety-minded <laughs> man walking through yeah. the forest. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> I'm going on a bushwalk. <laughs> Why are you filming me? <laughs> I could I could roll my ankle if I wasn't wearing these ankle wigs. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> So <laughs> we got audible laughs out of that. That's exciting. Oh, that's stupid. Okay, so she started to get into acting and some studio execs, some Sydney Scheinbergs, have suggested they change Natalia's name to Natalie Wood. Let's make it whiter. So her first name is Natalie Wood. Her <laughs> first name's Natalie Wood. They kept now. that crazy last name. <laughs> crazy Natalie Wood. Name. <laughs> Natalie Wood Devidenko Muscalia Uh uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you put Natalie Wood in front of that, it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> what was that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that close? 
<laughs> gives you momentum. You got momentum up top. You just uh, keep rolling just through. Keep through rolling. The name. People are once they get going, yeah. it, it, you'll be surprised how easy it is to pronounce it's a crazy Russian name. Russian names. <laughs> right, that's the key to Russian. Start in English. <laughs> you'll be speaking Russian in no time. <laughs> that is that is phenomenal. <laughs> Okay. So she's Natalie Wood. She's Natalie which, Wood which now. Which we can all agree is a classic name. It's a great name. It's so boring. It can't. It just shouldn't be a film star name, though. But I feel like people now, I can't really think of that many examples, but I feel like people now are kind of owning having different names. Yeah. Like you don't change your name to something a bit more basic. Right, sure, sure. Is that Australian actress who played Alice in Wonderland? She's got a cool surname with a W. Yeah. She's a Inski or something at the end, isn't it? Yeah. Park, I'm sorry. I do know who you're talking about, but I can't think of her name. I don't know who you're talking about, and I can tell you her name. No, <laughs> wow. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so just before Natalie turned five, she made her film debut. So she's a, a four-year-old. Let's oh, they said that. she to change her name at four years yeah, old. Yeah, she was that little. <laughs> Were you um, imagining a teen? I was imagining a I teen. I was imagining it like a 22-year-old or no, something. No, she's That's... she was a child actress. So said to the, said to a four-year-old girl, We get from now on, you're Natalie Wood. Yep. Your name's not good enough. <laughs> that yeah. is a stra- What a world. She so was... she's already been a ballet dancer and now she's noticed by execs. No, her mum wanted to be a ballet dancer or, and um, right. uh, or an actress. So, so she was like... You know, like many people who don't uh, achieve things in their own lives, they force it upon their children, you know? Mm-hmm. Like so, I want to be a dancer, so I never made it. My kid will definitely be a dancer. Yeah, my kid will play basketball for Australia. Great. Yeah. Mia Wozikowska. Thank you, yes. Mia, yeah. Who's that, sorry? That's the oh, Australian Ryan. actress. Oh, right. That's a oh. cool, cool name. That is a cool name. I'm not good with names in general. But that one I remembered once I Googled it. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so she's made a film review. She's in a scene in the 1943 film Happy Land. Her scene lasted for about 15 seconds. Ooh, that's good. That's the kind of scene I like to do. Yeah. In Lines that I can remember. Yeah. One you, day. You get the experience, you get the catering, but it never gets old because you're only there for one or two days. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, despite the short amount of screen time, she caught the attention of the director, Irving Pitchell, and he telephoned Wood's mother a while later asking her to bring her daughter to Los Angeles for a screen test for a different role. Uh, her mother became so excited that she packed the whole family up to Los Angeles to live. They all moved <laughs> to LA. For an audition. For an audition. No, not even an audition, a screen test. <laughs> We're going. That is a... Ex- <laughs> I thought you were saying, going to say so excited they brought the whole family over for, it. for the, like for the for afternoon the, for the weekend, <laughs> and that would have sounded wild. <laughs> nah, like moved. She quit her job, uprooted the family, <laughs> they sold the house. How do you think her dad felt about that? Like, did he move too? Oh yeah. At the time, it would have been like this is wild, but it sounds like it turned out like she knew what she was talking about. At least for a well, little bit. Um, Before the death bit. Yeah, her father was like, no, but his wife's overpowering ambition to make Natalie a star took priority. So they moved. Um, so this is a couple of years later. So Natalie was seven by now and she got the part. She played a post-World War II German orphan opposite Orson Welles as her guardian. Okay, that's some serious star power. Yeah, and the film was the 1946 film Tomorrow Is Forever. Um, Orson Welles later said that Natalie was a born professional and he said so good she was terrifying as a seven-year-old. <laughs> she, must be, she must be stopped. She's terrifying. Um, after she acted in another film directed by the same director, Irving Pitchell, her mother signed her off with 20th Century Fox Studio for her first major role, which was the 1947 Miracle on 34th Street, not the 1994 version. Ah, uh, I was going to say, not the one with the guy from that other show. Or the girl from Matilda. Uh, yeah, no, this is 1947. A lot of name dropping on this episode. Yeah. And it became a Christmas classic, as it still is, but probably the 94 version. I think right. it kind of, you know how now they do like remakes of films within a couple of years of the original? Yeah. At least this one was like, you know, 30 years apart. Longer than that. Much longer than 30. I'm bad at math. Okay. Um, like 50. 50 years later. Um, she worked constantly and consistently over the following years, appearing in over 20 films during her childhood. 20 films as a kid. Well, you laughed at the family for moving, Matt. Now look at her. <laughs> how many films were you in as a kid, Dave? Mm. Before you go... Running your mouth? I wasn't in any. I was in one commercial. Ooh. Were you? Yeah. Did we know this? 
Wish no, we could try and dig it out. It's so. on videotape at my parents' house somewhere. What? Yeah. Are, what for? Do you remember the ad? Which you might just because it was so annoying. Oh my god! Kids singing, "Hit that switch, Mitch! Way to go, Joe!" Yeah. Do you remember that? What was it for? It was just like uh, saving energy. So it's just like all the things that you should do to save energy. But it was terrible rhyming. Kids singing, and at the end. It said, the future's in our hands. And my head came down my giant forehead and sort of blocked the top half of the screen. <laughs> oh, we'll try and get a copy. Oh, my God. That's so yeah, good. Yeah, got to find that and we'll upload that. I'd love to see it again. I haven't seen it for over 50 What was your years. line? Uh, that a little bit of overlay of like you know, kids having fun and then <laughs> uh, the future's in our hands at the end was my main bit. Oh, my That's God. Really good. So good, good for you, Dave. Thank you. Did you get paid a lot for that? $1,200. Fuck off. Which at the time, when you're 11, is so much money. That's a lot of money. And I just sat in the my um, Dollar Mites account. Oh. The little... Accruing interest. Accru- yeah. So I think over the next, you know, nine years before I got the account at 18, uh, I don't know, eight years or so, it was uh, about $22 interest, so... Wow. That's more than 26-year-old Jess had in her savings account. Thank you. Not to brag. I'm 27 now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. You're a millionaire now. She went from oh, zero to a million in one year. Not. <laughs> Jess, how many, how many triple digits. did you do ads? No, I didn't do any ads. Matt, you were a child star. We all know that. No, I didn't do any. I didn't do anything. Um, I was in, I think the only time I was on TV was when I was in the audience of Sale of the Century. Oh, yes. And yeah. you're in your school on uniform? A sco- on a school Tell us about that. Assignment, a school Excursion. excursion and we were sitting or i was sitting right behind the carryover champs wife <laughs> so they kept um showing her in the audience and they got her to change because they record five episodes in a day <laughs> they record the week in a day just bang 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 so she had to change the, the the contestants had to change and she also had to change clothes each day from memory so mm. that it would look like but we're still sitting in the exact same spots in <laughs> uniform <laughs> They didn't even move you. No, they didn't shuffle us or anything. Oh, so, it, so good. So it's just it's like, like, those kids are like. just there every day. <laughs> yeah. That's lazy <laughs> teaching. Mm. And what did she win? What did they win? A Fisher and Michael mm. microwave valued at ninety seven dollars. I, well, I think he was he was cleaning up. Really? Yeah. I Imagine. Think it maybe almost went all the way, which is like a car and a big cash jackpot. Oh. One of my hobbies is looking at uh, prize showcases from 80s and 90s game shows. It's so funny because what they're winning is stuff that you now see on people's lawns for hard rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're so excited to win it. They're like, oh, my God. But like, it's a, driving just... a car that you'd be embarrassed to give your 18-year-old for, for their first car. But that's not even... Because it's the 80s and 90s. That's just how time works, yeah. Dave. <laughs> yeah, no, but I love that. I love it. It's not like the shit we have now. Our kids will be like, whoa. I you. also think about that. It's going to be so shit. It's just so good. We you, think like, you love that? You love that we just are throwing away so much stuff and our, our land is is weeping with with tears at, at and heaving at, at the seams from overfilling of our landfill. Well, I mean, you're paraphrasing me a bit, but yes. <laughs> Like we think smartphones are so amazing and our kids will just have like microchips in their brains. I don't know, Lucky probably bastards. not. They'll probably have smartphones and be like, like like when they thought in 2000 we'd have like hover cars. I don't know. Anyway, shall I get back to the report? Yes, yes please. please. Okay, great. Do go on. Um, so she's done 20 films as a child. Uh, the director of Miracle on 34th Street said she had an instinctive sense of timing and emotion. Many actors who worked with her testified to her professionalism and grit. And there was near universal agreement that the camera loved her. Oh, I love that. Mm. <laughs> I love the camera loving someone. Mm. Camera loves you. The camera loves you, baby. I mm. tell you in my commercial, the camera did not love me. Well, Dave, we know you as a human, so we what? know that to be true. I yeah. outgrew that, though. I became lovable. Oh, camera. absolutely. Thank yeah, you. no, I know. There is no way that they finish, have an end frame finishing on your head alone. It's, if, no, no, if it's the not camera my head alone. didn't love you. It's not my head alone, but I am a large part of it at the top. Yeah. Of. Is that didn't... just because of the large forehead? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Which, amazingly, was also larger then. It's weird. You haven't grown into your forehead. <laughs> I know, like most kids do. Yeah. It's not. It's, you've got a teeny tiny head, Matt. It's like you said, Matt. <laughs> you got a teeny tiny head, Matt. Sorry, I, sorry, I was just giving I love you, Matt. <laughs> Don't panic. Do, Don't you, panic, Matt. You're doing great, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry what they say. You've got a little head, mate. It's my mantra. <laughs> I 
that's how, that, that's how, I, that's how I get to sleep at night. Oh, it's my mantra. That's my mantra. Okay, shut up. Yes, please. This must be fucking tedious. Okay. Shitting people off, I reckon. Yes, Dave. <laughs> it's all gold. You're wiggling your finger at us. I'm saying stop that. Stop talking badly. <laughs> so California law required that until the age of 18, child actors had to spend at least three hours per day in a classroom. So they'd have like tutors on set with them. So she starred in several films set in classrooms. <laughs> she was an excellent student, actually, but she herself said, I always felt guilty when I knew the crew was sitting around waiting for me to finish my three hours. As soon as the teacher let us go, I ran to the set as fast as I could. She was such a little hard worker. Oh, I'm and... sure that they were doing a lot of other things in that time, like setting up for the shot. Anyway. I was going to say, like, smoking bongs. Oh, yeah. Were they Dave, did, is that they, what you were saying? Were they hitting bongs? Yes. Paraphrasing again, but absolutely right. <laughs> well, so I thought it was cute because she's quite a hard worker, but the reason for that is that early on it was drummed into her that the family's fortune rested solely on her. Oh, fuck. We moved out. at the age of four for you. Yeah. And the result that um, what compelled uh, Natalie to act was not the desire to perform, it was a compulsion to please. So she wants to please it. And I did kind of talk earlier about her um, her mum being a real stage mum. There's actually a I, – I remember seeing a – what I thought was a made-for-TV film. Turns out it was a miniseries um, about Natalie Wood. And I remembered vividly – I was re-watching it again on YouTube. I remembered this scene where, like, five-year-old Natalie has to cry in a scene and her mum, like, drags her over and was like, if we need this job – or we can't pay rent. Like she was, she was really laying into this kid. And then, oh, it gets worse. She pulls out. I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming this is based in reality, but it's, it is in a, a fictionalised kind of thing. She pulls out a jar that has a butterfly in it. And she's like, look, there's a butterfly. Oh, and the little girl's no. like, yay. And then she rips the wings off this no. butterfly. No fucking way. And then Natalie goes and does her scene where she has to drop her ice cream and cry. And this little girl's just crying hysterically. And then at the end of the scene, does the mum put the wings back on the butterfly? Sure. Yep. Oh, thank oh, God. God. And the butterfly was like, oh, that was a bit. Right. Unfortunate, but I understand you had to do that to get the best performance out yeah. of Natalie. <laughs> oh, I'll see you next week. Flap, 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 that flap. is horrific. Yeah, it's fucked. This, yeah, this, this has the f- everything about. I mean, so far, this is obviously a tragedy, mm. but we know it ends there's well. a, a good ending exactly for her, which is what Matt's hanging out for over there. Yep, and I just wanted to mention as well with that uh, with that mini series is that at one stage uh, Marilyn Monroe is in it chatting to young Natalie Wood. And I was like, that person looks awfully familiar. It was Sophie Monk playing Marilyn Monroe. Ah, that makes sense. She got a start as a Marilyn Monroe exactly. impersonator. And then I saw later in the program Rachel Taylor was in there. I was like, that's weird. That's another Australian. And then a little bit later on <gasps> our good friend Natalie Bassingthwaite no. was in there as well. So I was like, what the fuck? There are so many Australians. It's I'm pretty sure Colin Friels is in it as well. Sydney. It was filmed Sydney. in Sydney. Um, bunch of South African and Australian actors in it. Crazy. Crazy. But, yeah, Sophie Monk, Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, so that's how Natalie Bassingthwaite comes you into this it. report. And you, you did it, fuckos, baby. That's so good. You fuckos were like, I don't know how you'll do this. I, well, I would never have thought Natalie Bassingthwaite would have come into any of our reports. But here we are. But here we are. Next week I'm doing a report on Rogue Traders. Oh, her awesome, awesome You're band. You're my voodoo, baby. <laughs> What a track. And that's not theirs, right? That's just taken from something else. No, that's theirs. Oh, that's all theirs. I wow. Don't know. I don't know that wow, for sure. Wow, that's, that's a hot lick. <laughs> a hot lick. I don't like that. That's mm. a yuck image. Yeah, well, I mean, don't think about it like that. It's a musical term. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, lick, like riff. A hot lick. Yeah. Dave says it all the time. I don't. And he's a big muso. I made it cool. Hmm, okay. So unlike many modern child stars, she successfully made the transition from child star to teen star <laughs> at the age <laughs> of 16 uh, when she co-starred with James Dean. Did you have a bar mitzvah? In Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, I've, I've seen that. 1955. A good year. Um, it, was, it was a film by Nicholas Ray and it was about teenage rebellion. 
In fact, she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for a, for a role. Really? I just, wow, okay, there yeah. you go. That's cool. Um, and she graduated high school the next year, 1956. And after she'd done that, she signed with Warner Brothers and was uh, kept busy during the remainder of the decade in many girlfriend roles. She played a lot of girlfriends. Um, which she found kind of unsatisfying. So does that mean like the best friend of the main actress or the girlfriend of the main? Probably like the girlfriend. The yeah, she'd be the girlfriend of a man, not like, like a, the leading man. Not a fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Like uh, the role about. I would be casting would be the funny friend. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't. I'm never the leading lady, and I'm never the other woman. I'm the funny friend. You know, cool. funny friend feels that's a is that a good role? Oh, I I can want that role. Yeah. The funniest role, big time. Because yeah, that's the that's the character who's. That's comic relief character, right? Yeah, and you're only there, again, you're on set for a shorter period of time because you don't have as many scenes, but you fucking steal those scenes. I've changed, yeah, I, I've changed my mind from before. I want I want to be in every scene, yeah. Oh, okay. You I've upped be, it from 15 seconds to an hour and a half, please. You want to be on in every, every scene? Every scene. It's a big jump. Oof, that's a lot of work. Mm. And if anything, it would be boring to watch, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And no one else. I want to, That's another thing. Oh, I want okay. Else. So you want a stand-up special is what you're saying. You <laughs> but, want to do stand-up comedy. But he wants to do it in different locations. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you want to be a touring comedian, which you are. But I want to have Steven Spielberg directing. Oof. And the loose narrative. Because I'm a, I'm a real movie buff. <laughs> when I think of a director quickly, it's... <laughs> it's, 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 it's an obscure <laughs> one. Jess, could I just interrupt you for a brief second? Please. To talk about something a little bit serious, but also very, very important. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you know, Jess. Actually, I do know that you know. But uh, <laughs> right now, Planet Broadcasting is teaming up t- for a fundraiser for Care Australia. Yeah. This is the second annual Planet Broadcasting fundraiser. Last year, Planet Broadcasting, which is the network of podcasts that we are on, that we are part of. You would have heard a little sting at the start of this. Uh, raised $40,000 for men's mental health uh, awareness through Movember, w- which is a lot of money. Heaps of money. And we are hoping to beat that this year. Yeah, we're hoping that people will dig deep with our new charity partner this year, which is Care Australia. And we're hoping that people will dig deep so we can support women and girls living in extreme poverty across the globe. Care Australia, if you haven't heard of them, is a leading international aid organisation that works around the globe to save lives and defeat poverty through their five pillars, which we're going to tell you a little bit about those right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will tell you the first one. Uh, So gender equality, so empowering girls and uh, and women. Uh, Education, caring for a lifetime of learning. (laughs) Okay. Uh, number three is health, water, and sanitation, supporting healthy lives through those three things. Also, food security, so aiming to end hunger. And emergency aid, caring for families in crisis, particularly for Syrian refugees. All things that can literally change people's lives with just a couple of dollars if you are able to chip in. We would m- greatly appreciate that. And 40 so- grand last year, that's fucking sick. Yeah, it's, it's quite- amazing. It can make a lot of difference uh, in a lot of young women's lives who... Um, Really you need know, it. Really need your help. And uh, you can ask a question on the forum uh, to any of our podcasters when you donate, which is kind of cool. So you get something as well as feeling like a, a, a good person that's helping other people in the world. And this year we aim to answer as many as we can by sending you some bonus content direct to your inbox from some of your favorite uh, Planet Broadcasting podcasters, including our one, uh, The Weekly Planet, and uh, you know all the other cool guys that will team up. The bonus content will be available at the end of the campaign, and this is the important bit. To support Care Australia's life-changing work, you can visit visit planetbroadcasting.com or click the link in the show notes below. Yeah. Anything anything you can give. If you had a chance just to ask any of the other podcasts on the network one question, what would it be? I'd say, hey, Adam Knox, why don't you ever return my phone calls? (laughs) And he'd have to answer. That's answer. the beauty of this He'd have system. to answer. He'd have to answer. And at the same time, you'd, you'd change a young girl's life. <laughs> Me. I yeah. reckon my... Well, okay, well, two girls' lives. <laughs> if I don't ask one to be Alistair Tremblay Birchall, what makes you tick? <laughs> <laughs> you had that locked and loaded, didn't you? No, but he's got a real funny name, doesn't he? It's oh, fun to say. Love, love it. Al. it Alistair Tremblay Birchall. Try it at home. We call him ATB around the... Traps. We do. If I had to ask a question, I'd say, Oi, Broden Kelly, <gasps> do you want to fight me? <laughs> no, no, Dave Warner kid, no, I don't want to fight you. I'm <laughs> a big God. cuddly teddy bear Thank of a God. man. Because I, re- I really hoped that he would back down from the fight and I'd look like a tough guy. <laughs> oh, so that worked out really did, well. I guess. 
No, you just looked like you were being weird and yeah, aggressive and he was being his aggressive. usual friendly self. He, he, he came off really well in that yeah, interaction, Yeah, good Dave. job, bro. Do I not look good? No, no. you came off quite poorly. This there. is not your best. What have I told you that I will be donating to uh, Care Australia? Oh, oh see, okay. People will think highly of you and so will we if you get involved, guys. So remember, planetbroadcasting.com or click the link in the show notes below. Anything you can give will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much and on with the show. Please. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So she's unsatisfied in her girlfriend roles and she longs for more serious work and probably had the ability to do it, but she was hesitant to veer too far outside of the Hollywood mainstream. Is it, in every film, is her mum on the set torturing insects <laughs> to inspire her? I believe so. <laughs> Even into her 20s. It was weird. That's so weird. <laughs> I hate that a lot. Oh. Butterfly, who would do that to a butterfly? I know, it's awful, isn't That's it? That's a bad person. I mean, you've got to be pretty good to catch it, grab it by the body and then to get the wings off. But she also had it there ready to go. Yeah. She had it in a jar. Premeditated. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. Um, on Natalie's 18th birthday, she went on a, uh, it says a studio arranged date. I think it was like, have your people call my people. Um, with the then 26-year-old actor, Robert Wagner. Oh, uh, how Robert, old was she? Robert Wagner. She was 18. Okay. I, think, I feel like um, they would organise those and then try and get photos of them together so yeah. that the newspaper would print like, oh, story. Because they're two studio stars. Yeah. it used to be like that, right, that yeah. one, a studio would sign contracts to actors and they'd do a certain amount of movies for them rather than yeah, that's it right. to be more case by case. Mm. That's what, yeah, so she signed with Warner Brothers um, when she was about 20 or when she finished high school, so around this time. Um, they'd seen each other around town, around the acting community. In fact, Natalie had a crush on him since she was a child because he's a bit older than her. Um, he said in an interview, this is much later, he said, at dinner we both sensed things were different. I sent her flowers and the dates continued. I remember the instant I fell in love with her. One night on board a small boat I owned. All right, mate. Uh, she looked at me with love, her dark brown eyes lit by a table lantern. That moment changed my life. Isn't that nice? That's very cinematic. Do you remember the moment you fell in love with me? Uh, yes, it was uh, a few weeks ago on my boat. Ah, I remember it well. That moment changed my life. <laughs> They actually got married the next year in December of 1957. Um, her mother didn't approve of the marriage. I'm not really entirely sure why, whether it was the age difference or... He probably wasn't famous enough for her. Wasn't famous enough. Or maybe she felt like she was she would lose control of her daughter if her daughter was married, you know. Somebody else has got control of her now, Mum. <laughs> Woo! Um after the 1960 film All the Fine Young Cannibals, her oh. career started to lose a bit of momentum or she felt she was losing a bit of momentum. Um, Is that where the Fine Young Cannibals band name comes from? Possibly. I guess it does. Um, and the Hollywood director, Elia Kazan, who was one of the most honoured and influential directors in Broadway and Hollywood history, according to the New York Times, uh, he wanted to interview Natalie for a role in his 1961 film Splendour in the Grass. <gasps> Is that where the music festival name Splendor in the Grass comes from? Presumably. Um, that was going to be opposite Warren Beatty. Um, he ignored people in the acting community who said Natalie was washed up and wanted to interview her anyway. Isn't she 22? <laughs> yeah, she's like 20. Been in the biz for 18 years though. Yeah. He cast her as the female lead in Splendor in the Grass and her career rebounded. At oh my 22. <laughs> yeah, she's back, baby. Where did she go? He felt that despite her earlier innocent roles, she had the talent and maturity to go beyond them. In the film, Warren Beatty's character was deprived of sexual love uh, with Wood's character and as a result turns to another looser girl. Oh, gross. Is that your words? No. no. Oh, okay. It's in inverted commas also. Okay, it's difficult to get that through the podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay. A, a looser girl, not my words. Whose uh, words? I don't know. Wherever I got this from. <laughs> Natalie Wood. Um, her character could not handle the sexuality and, and after a breakdown was committed to a mental institution. So it's a gritty role. Um, for her performance in Splendor in the Grass, she received nominations for the Academy Award, Golden Globe and BAFTA for Best Actress in a Leading Role. So she's kicking it in the dick. Um, in 1961, she played Maria in West Side Story, Story which was a major box office and <laughs> critical success. Um, you may have heard of it. Um, mm. And she co-starred in the slapstick comedy The Great Race in 1965 with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis. Did you ever see that? No. My parents had it on VHS and I I didn't know until I was rereading it then that that was 
Natalie Wood. But, you know, Tony Curtis and, and Jack Lemon working together is always good and she plays this, like, I'm pretty sure she plays a Russian character. Is it, is it would you call it a romp? It's a bit of a romp. It does sort of sound familiar. Is yeah. it about a car race? It's sort of like Cannonball Run yeah, or something? Yeah, I think it's a car race or it's some kind of, well, I feel like they're in a hot air balloon at one point. It's I'm a like, land race. Land race. From New York to Paris. New York to Paris. How's that work? Uh, yeah, especially by land. I guess that's where the hot air balloons come in. Maybe. Anyway, uh, I remember watching it as a kid and it's um, it's a bit of a romp. You're right. Um, so in 1964, she received her third Academy Award nomination for Love with a Proper Stranger, making her the second ag- actress to net three Oscar nominations by the age of 25. And the only person who'd done that before was Teresa Wright, who'd won two awards in the 40s, so like 20 years earlier. Um, so she's 25 and killing it. Feeling alive. 25, feeling alive. Jennifer Lawrence would probably rival that now. Oh, yeah, good point. Um, that's depressing. How, how old is J. Law? 27. She's the same age as Dave and I. Or she might have, I think she's January, so she may have already turned 28. She grows up so fast, don't, don't they? No. From cat piss, Everdeen. Yeah. Is that her name? <laughs> Katniss. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's a joke. Um, Natalie and Robert Wagner separated in June of 1961 and they divorced in April of 62. And then a few years later, um, on May 30th, 1969, she married British producer Richard Gregson. They dated for a couple of years, um, about two and a half years prior to their marriage, while Gregson waited for his divorce to be finalised. Gregson is one of the funniest surnames. It's Gregson. Very, very funny. Gregson is so funny. <laughs> um, in 1970, they had a daughter, Natasha, um, and then they separated the next year after Wood overheard an inappropriate telephone conversation between her secretary and Gregson. Don't have a lot of details. Sometimes I like to just leave it out. Her secretary and, and her Gregson. husband, yeah. That's no good. No. But the next year after they'd separated, she resumed her relationship with Robert Wagner, her first husband. Oh. He had also been uh, married in between. He married actress Marion Marshall in July of uh, 1963 um, and they had a daughter, Katie, and they divorced in 1971 after eight years of marriage and that's when Natalie and, and Robert got back together and they remarried again. In July of 1972, 10 years after their first divorce. So she's married both men twice. No, she only married Gregson once. He was going, uh, uh, that was. He but, was married they, they before. They were both married before, in between. Oh. Robert Wagner was married. So this is the fifth, uh, the fourth wedding. Wagner and Wood. Yep. Wood and some guy, Wagner and Marion Marimur. Yep. And then they got back and together. And they got back together. Right. Like Just trying to pay attention, mate. Reckon... You're playing my role right now, Dave. I know. Do you reckon you can pay attention? I mean, there's so many marriages going on. I know. But Where's the four? point but is. But she did marry someone twice. Yeah, Robert Wagner. Wagner, who she's married to now. Gotcha. In the story. Okay, Go great. from Austin Powers. Um, Number two. So it was 10 years after their first divorce. It was only five months after they'd reconciled and three months after she divorced Gregson. So as soon as their divorce Gregson. came through, she was like, let's get hitched. And then they had a daughter, their first daughter together, Courtney Wagner, in 1974. So they'd been married before, divorced for 10 years, got married again, then had a kid. Courtney Wagner. That's not bad. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. I like that. Um, when she became a mum to her first child, Natasha, she kind of went into semi-retirement. She focused on her family more than her acting career. Um, she only acted in four more feature films in her life. She appeared on screen with her husband, Robert Wagner, in a couple of projects. One was a television movie of the week. Which makes it sound not too good. Not great. It's called The Affair. That was in 1973. They also started an adaptation of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof uh, in 76. Um, she made a cameo appearance on his primetime detective series Switch in 1978. Her character was Bubble Bath Girl. Wow. Uh, I've noted a few of these down because the, the, um, the, the role is good. She also, in 1979, was on Heart to Heart as Movie Star. <laughs> Oh, man. Pretty good. She's a multi-Oscar nominated actress. Yeah, they she, don't even give her characters, characters names. Don't names anymore. I think she appeared as herself in something as well. She had um, roles in a couple of films, but mostly flops, and she started to have a lot more success in her TV work. She actually got a Golden Globe for Best Actress in 1980 for her role in Here to Eternity. So she's still working, but she was just more focused on, like, her family. 
Then, in late November 1981, the couple invited their friend Christopher Walken. Ever oh, heard of him? He's involved in this. Oh, interesting. He co-starred with Natalie in uh, Brainstorm. Um, they invited him for a trip on the family's yacht, which was called Splendor, off uh, Santa Catalina Island in California. The only other person on board the boat was its skipper, Dennis Deverne. Oh, I thought it was going to be Dennis Hopper. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. They, but they make him drive, drive the boat. <laughs> no talking. <laughs> so they got the couple, Christopher Walken and the skipper, and that's it. That's and it. And the rest. And the rest. <laughs> it's two more characters. <laughs> it's Dennis Hopper. Come on, give him some fucking credit. Easy Rider. Funnily enough, <laughs> did you say Easy Rider? Yeah. Okay. This next sentence is amazing then. Just after 1am on November 28, 1981, Wagner radioed a boat nearby. That boat was called Easy Rider. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Hopper must have been in charge. Oh, that is wild. <laughs> He there said, are no coincidences. He said, <laughs> he said, Easy Rider, are you cruising in the vicinity? You're goddamn right I'm cruising. <laughs> I said, no. Well, this is Splendor. We think we may have someone missing in an 11-foot rubber dinghy. Oh. We think we may have someone missing. Yeah, I mean, there's only four of you. Do a quick yeah. head count. There's three of us now. Someone's missing. That feels missing. like they're not. Yeah. Half an hour later, the sea was lit from the beams of harbour patrol boats. It was lit. Private boats of the Baywatch and uh, Coast Guard helicopters searching for the missing actor. Natalie was gone. In a rubber dinghy. In a rubber dinghy. At 7.30am the following day, a helicopter was on its way to join the search when suddenly one of its crew spotted a red object in the sea below and directed the pilot to move closer. Face down in a flannel nightgown, red jacket and blue socks, floated the body of Natalie Wood less than two kilometres from the Splendour. The dinghy was found beached nearby. After her body was found, Wagner told police that his wife had gone to bed before him and he didn't notice she was missing until he went to their bedroom sometime after midnight and noticed she wasn't there. Uh, Later, Wagner, Walken and Deverne told investigators that Wood took off in a dinghy and went ashore even though it was well known that she was terrified of water. Well, um, I suppose you'd want to go to shore to get away from the water. That's fair. You'd, yeah. This is from an article in Variety. This is a little uh, thing here about, you know, because there's, there's a lot of unknowns with this investigation and a lot of things are holes in the story. So Suzanne Finstad, who wrote a biography of Natalie Wood, points out that the most disconcerting piece of this case is the commonly accepted theory that Wood went down the ladder at the back of the boat and onto the swim step, possibly to board the dinghy, which makes no – like it's all in defiance of her lifetime fear of water. From early childhood, Wood's mother had filled her with a fear of dark water because a fortune teller had prophesied that Maria would drown and she transferred this and many other fears onto her child. Oh, wow. So she convinced Natalie that you will drown. <laughs> Uh, When filming The Green Promise as a 10-year-old, she was terrified to play a scene in which she had to cross a bridge over raging water. Um, The bridge was rigged to collapse the moment she reached safety, so she was supposed to get across the bridge. Um, Her mother assured her that it would be perfectly safe, but when she got to the midpoint of the bridge, it collapsed and she was thrown into the water, barely clinging onto part of the bridge. I mean, it's in a controlled set, but there's still real rushing water. And she's afraid of it. And she's terrified of water. That would really... If it's feeling like the Truman Show. You know, yeah. That made him fear water and then whenever he went close they made it fucked. Yeah. Just hammers yeah. it home. It's a bit like that. And the director yelled, keep the cameras rolling and filmed her like struggling through the water and she got to like the edge and pulled herself out but she'd broken her wrist or something. Like it was pretty bad. Keep oh filming. God. Keep filming. I like that instinct. <laughs> Her fear of water became such a phobia that friends and family recall she was afraid to have her hair washed and had recurring nightmares about drowning. And again at the age of 14, because of the last-minute script change, she was given the choice of jumping off the back of a boat or losing her role in The Star with Betty Davis. She jumped and immediately became hysterical. So if she was this terrified of water, why would she have decided to get into a boat and go into the ocean, which is largely water? But why would they own a yacht in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, it's her husband's yacht, I suppose, like... He's probably a bit more. But, yeah, the ocean's mostly water and that's the thing that she fears. But just what you forget is we're mostly made of water. Mm. Mm. And there were three people mostly made of water on that ship for her to get away from. Yeah, okay, so she's getting away from one body of water. 
by skimming so, across another body of water. Maybe she's, she's getting away from three bodies of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Four. she's only afraid of fresh water. Right. Mm. Not salt water. Salt makes it more buoyant. Exactly. That's true. I mean, if they found her body floating. Yeah, quite buoyant. I'm quite surprised by that. Wouldn't yeah. she sink? Yeah. Well, eventually. Right. Yeah, when her, like her body starts like soaking up the water, right? Don't you get bloated? Yeah, you blow out and then... Uh, gross. Yeah, it's gross. I'm glad they found her. Um, in his 2008 memoir... Wagner admitted he'd fought with both Christopher Walken and Natalie Wood on the night she died, but that they'd all calmed down afterwards and he still didn't know what had happened to her. Nobody knows, he wrote. There are only two possibilities. Either she was trying to get away from the argument or she was trying to tie the dinghy. But the bottom line is that nobody knows exactly what happened. Did I blame myself? Of course I did. If I'd been there, I could have done something, but I wasn't there. I didn't blame himself. I didn't see her. I was only feet away. The door was closed. I thought she was below deck. I didn't hear anything. But ultimately, a man is responsible for his loved ones, and she was my loved one. So it's like, so are you answering your question there? Did you blame yourself? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you sounded it was a lot of excuses. <laughs> yeah. So in summary. Feels like I was expecting him to say, yes, of course I blame myself. That would be a reasonable thing to say. In 2011, Christopher Walken spoke about the death and provided a plausible explanation for what uh, may have happened. As he told Playboy magazine, where all the plausible explanations go, um, mm. what happened that night, only she knows because she was alone. She'd gone to bed before us and her room was at the back. A dinghy was bouncing against the side of the boat and I think she went out to move it. There was a ski ramp that was partially in the water. It was slippery. I'd walked on it myself. Oh, fuck, I should be doing a walking impression. I can't do a walking impression. Luckily, Dave can. <laughs> Give him a line. Gold watch. <laughs> Does he mention gold watches in this? Does he mention the gold watch? No. That's My... pretty much the only thing I can even think of how he would say <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend does a lot of... Walk in. It's always just, friends, listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, it does it much better. Anyway. That's very good. Uh, she told me she couldn't swim. In fact, they had to cut a in swimming. In fact. In fact, uh, they had to cut a swimming scene from Brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> better than I expected. <laughs> she was probably half asleep. Anyway. Um, but the boat's captain, Dennis Deverne, Dennis Hopper, Said on the US Today show <laughs> in 2011. <laughs> Dennis Deverne slash Dennis Hopper. <laughs> he admitted that he'd made mistakes by not telling the honest truth in a police report. Mm. He said that the couple had gotten into a huge fight and that Wagner shouted at Walken, do you want to fuck my wife? Before smashing a bottle of wine and then lady yelling, get the fuck off my boat. He said that to Christopher Walken. Yeah, I beg your pardon. He said, get off my fucking boat. This is my fucking boat. It's for fucking. Oh, if, right. you if you don't want to be... fuck my wife, get off my fucking <laughs> boat. <two> options. <laughs> Deverne claimed Wagner told him what to say initially and had lawyers write a statement on his behalf, which he, which they forced him to sign. So, he claimed that Wagner appeared to be sweaty, flushed, anxious, nervous, and dishevelled when they realised she wasn't on the boat. Dishevelled. No, <laughs> dishevelled. No. Yes. <laughs> I immediately wanted to radio for help and turn on the searchlight, but Robert Wagner told me sternly. I like that he calls him Robert Wagner. <laughs> told yeah, me sternly. The Academy Award nominated Robert Wagner <laughs> turned to me and said. He just doesn't want to sound like they're friends at all. I think. Yeah. And Mr. Wagner might have made more yes. sense. If that is his real name. Told me sternly, we're not going to do that. We'll wait and see if she returns. Uh, that's not, not. It's weird, right? Yeah. She might just swim back to the boat. Yeah, she loves swimming. She might have just gone for a dip. Should we not just have a quick look in case? She loves a night dip. No, instead what they did is uh, while we waited, Wagner opened a s a scotch and poured alcohol for me. He encouraged me to drink. Uh, he discussed with me the repercussions of bringing any immediate attention to the situation and he claimed he did not want to tarnish his image. After an <laughs> autopsy was conducted on the body, authorities revealed that Natalie's arms had been covered in bruises. There was a scratch on her neck and abrasions on her face and that it was likely the injuries had occurred prior to her drowning. Um, at the time, due to the alcohol and two types of medications found in her system, her cause of death was ruled as an accidental drowning. But after Deverne's changed recount led to the case reopening in 2011, a medical examiner changed the cause to drowning and other undetermined factors. I think one of the things in her system was like a painkiller and one of them might have been like a seasickness kind of thing. It wasn't like she was on hard drugs. Yeah. But but those 
sorts of things can heighten the effects of alcohol. And I think her blood alcohol was quite high. So she was um, probably a bit pissed. Um, And in Feb of this year, Robert Wagner has been named as a person of interest in the death of his late wife, Natalie Wood, 36 years after she died. 2018. Yep. Oh, wow. So basically what I'm saying there is it's still open. It's still a mystery. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't sound like a mystery. It sounds pretty weird, right? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, a mystery of what happened, but it feels like there's some very strong suspects. Yeah. Allegedly, I guess. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Safe. Dennis Hopper. Who Where were dead? you, Easy Rider? Who is dead so we can talk about him being suspect? But it's really strange, right? Oh, man, Christopher Walken. There's also a part of me too that's kind of like, you know when he's talking about like the repercussions if we make a fuss now. Like, you know when you have a fight with your partner and you're fighting but you're in public so you're kind of like, well, I know we need to calm down right now but yeah. we are fighting. I feel like it's a little bit like that. Like she's chucked a tantrum. Or he's thinking she's chucked a tantrum and right. like stormed off. And he's like, don't panic. Oh, uh, right. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not uh. on his side or anything but I just think like. I've been in situations where I've stormed off and come back and be like, I'm fine, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I haven't jumped off a boat, you know. Is everything okay? No. <laughs> Help me. My God. So, and does Robert Wagner, what's the, his latest? Does he, does he not really talk about it? Yeah, he's not really talking. And her sister, her younger sister, Lana, uh, Svetlana, Lana Wood, uh, also an actress, is – um. He's quite vocal about it and he's sort of saying, like, you, he, know, you need to talk. Wagner, he doesn't – does he not work anymore? Is that why he was replaced in Austin Powers? Oh, I'm, it's funny that the no. only the only reason I know him – it's not funny, but it's, it's – it sounds like he was quite a big actor <laughs> and the only reason I know him is from Austin Powers. I know him from Austin Powers as well. But I'm pretty – He. I wonder why he lost that role. <laughs> Was he only replaced because they it's a fl- they did a it's a flashback? Oh, maybe it was. Yeah, mm. yeah, I don't know. But that basically brings us to the end of my report. It does, in fact, not basically. It does bring us to the end of my report on Natalie Wood and the drowning of Natalie Wood, as suggested by Henry. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Henry. What a what a sad what story, a story, start to finish. Right? Yeah, really talented actress. Beautiful. Yeah, Camera it like loved it. Just did not get looked after at, by at anyone. By any, really, everyone took advantage and mm. or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Oh, I wonder what happened. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wonder what happened. Just telling, just telling, Maddie, Hey. <laughs> it is unsatisfying when we have. You no never answers. said bop. Sadly, I hated that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, hey, Maddie, hey, look at me. It's okay. We're all right. It says here that Robert Wagner has a re- recurring role as Teddy Leopold in the TV sitcom Two and a Half Men, or did, and had a recurring role as Anthony Denozo mm. Sr. on NCIS. And uh, so he's still the working. Actor, I think the actor who played Denozo, Michael Weatherly. Yeah, he oh. plays Robert Wagner in the telemovie. Oh. oh. What what's his character like in that? Oh, how do they portray the drowning in that? Um, uh, I don't really remember. I imagine they would have had to have played it like it was she left, or 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 they probably just kept it super wide open. Yeah, some sort of terrible accident or something. I think. Mm. Yeah, I think she was um, like she was like forty six or something. She wasn't. Yeah. yeah it sounds young. pretty dodgy. Yeah, it does. So yeah, that's uh, that's my report. Thank you to Henry for uh, suggesting it. I'm super surprised I'd never heard of that. Yeah, I, I thought you would have at least known the name because it's a, yeah. I think I only I only heard about it when it when someone said I was saying something about enjoying uh, Wagner's in uh, Austin Powers, the movie I know him from, right. and, um, <laughs> and they were like, "Ooh, you should look into him," and I never did. But now you know why they made they that made comment. They made it sound like it was he may have done something bad. Mm. But yeah, it doesn't sound so. It sounds like it's not. So the case has been reopened. Yeah, it was reopened in 2011, and it's been investigated. Um, but he's only just this year been named as a person of interest. Right. But that's 36 years after she died. Yeah, that all feels well. Hopefully, uh, they get some closure. He's with 88 years old, so 
88. We may never know. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he has a deathbed. Um, I guess it. I guess the only way, if he on his deathbed, he goes, "I was telling the truth. I really don't know." Yeah. That's some. Pe- that's not going to be enough for some people. No. Um. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's really killed the mood there. Sorry about that. Well, that, I mean, I even I wouldn't have picked one that sad. Well, <laughs> a live audience would love it. There's people at home cheering right now. Probably. Let's wrap this shit up. That was, no, it was a very interesting topic. Yeah, just, just especially the story. That's just a tragedy. Her childhood acting story. The the whole idea of those of parents who go for one, and there's a big history of that. Mm. Especially in America, seemingly. Yeah. Hollywood. But maybe that's just Hollywood and big time sports. Yeah, for sure. And music as well. Cause mm. I'm pretty sure Michael Jackson had a very tough time as a kid and plenty of others. Mm. Tennis mums and tennis dads is Oof. a classic, like Demir Dokic. Swimming. Swimming, yeah. Just parents are really pushing all the pressure onto their little kids. Yeah. And they're the one. I guess it's because that's how they're the ones who end up um, reaching the heights because they get pushed too far. But it's also those are the kind of sports where you start quite young. Yeah. Swimming, gymnastics, And tennis, acting can be as well. Acting, yeah. Anyway. I am so sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm all right. I found it to be an interesting story that I didn't know anything about, so thank you for that. And uh, we've got to say uh, thank you to everyone that does support uh, support the show and also suggest cool topics like that. So I say cool, you know, interesting is what I mean. And so if you know any interesting stories and you want to suggest them, you can do that at any time via the link in the description of this episode. There is a little uh, a form you fill out. And you can also tell us why you think we should do that topic, which is often a good way of getting it over the line. Honestly, yeah. that, that helps me. It, they pop out more. Yeah. So yeah, we go that's through the hat. There's thousands of suggestions now. You give us a little hook. Yeah, yeah. we think, oh. Oh, hello. A little bio. Oh, we do a little Google search. We go, oh. Hello. Oh, hello there. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Um, oh, this is a good mystery. A little yeah. tasty morsel. Ooh, de- Gobble up some of that knowledge. Yeah. Oh, depress Matt with this one. Oh, that's my, it's usually how I go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, we would like to thank some uh, some people. And also we'd like to thank the Patreon people. Yeah. People that support the show at patreon.com slash do go on pod. If you want to support the show, maybe you listen every week and you're thinking, how can I help these guys out and make this, you know, even more professional than it already is? And I've got it. You know how we, we always give them something? Yes. Today I think what we should do is give them a stage name. Oh, okay, great. We're going to change their names to make them easier. First and last? First, ah, oh, if necessary. Okay, great. We'll make that decision. This first one. Um, so these are all people that support the show through Patreon. That's what I was trying to say. This I'm first sorry. one pa- potentially, actually, a, a lot of these names that I've got here are pretty. They're pretty great as they are, but no, I reckon you can <laughs> zhuzh them up even further. Yep. Bob, firstly from Massa in Arizona, I'd love to thank Zoe Sabrowski. Mm. Oh no 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 no! no, 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 no. I'm afraid that I will think we not can keep fit. Zoe. On a poster. We can keep Zoe because there's only a couple of Zoe's. Okay. Zoe. Zoe. Shiner. Zoe Shiner. Zoe Shiner. Zoe Shiner. Starring Zoe Shiner. And introducing Zoe Shiner. Oh, yeah, okay. Zoe yeah, Shiner. Great. Thank you, Zoe. I imagine that Zoe is an aspiring young actor of about six or seven. I'm right. About to hit the big time supporting yeah. our show. When Shiner, you, I've never heard the name Shiner. you gotta, you got to create names. Well, yeah. You have All that, that just means black eye. Yeah, so he uh, can be pretty violent on set. Right, but they have, that's they part have of her art. A, you know, a, a minder at all times for this young. Yeah. She goes you know, all in. Do. Yeah. So thank yeah. you, Zoe. Shiner. Thank you, Zoe Shiner. <laughs> well done. Yeah. And I'd also love to thank uh, from Portsmouth in the UK in England, Katie O'Day. Oh, I like I O'Day. Mean, that's ready to go. Yeah. Right? I, like O'Day, I feel like Katie O'Day is good. I like O'Day. I think that maybe we should replace the first name. This okay. Time. Just yeah. Okay. You want to jazz it up a little something bit? Something O'Day. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Cecilia. Oh, Cecilia O'Day. Cecilia O'Day. It rolls off the tongue. Mm. How many famous Cecilias are there, other than the song? I don't know if I can think of any. Correct. Cecilia. So then, eventually, she'll just be like Adele. Just Hello, Cecilia. I'm Adele. 
It's me, Adele. No one knows her surname. Hello, Adkins. We've talked about this before. Um, (laughs) Adkins. Adele Adkins. Oh, I like that. (laughs) Adele Adkins. Well, that's much better. I just like saying, hello, I'm Adele. Say, hello, I'm Cecilia. Hello, I'm Cecilia. Great. Fuck, she's good. I imagine that's how you sound, Cecilia, Cecilia and we appreciate your support. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like Katie O'Day. Anyway. No, Katie O'Day is pretty Look, is Matt, great. the segment doesn't work if we don't change at least <laughs> yeah, some of Matt, their names. Come on, mate. Zoe Sabrowski to Zoe Shiner. Zoe Shiner. That's a great name. Stop shitting on the segment. If I wrote a novel, I'd put... <laughs> this is fun. We're having fun. It is fun. No, you're right. I mean, it's a lot of fun. No doubt about that. All right. Who have you got? I, I would like to thank a star in the making, all the way mm-hmm. from Washington in a place called Poo Yellop. Poo Yellop. I'm sure you're laughing at how I've said that, Megan. <laughs> and your name is Megan Hughes. Megan Hughes, already too simple. We Thank need so to make much. that a bit Megan different. H- oh, sorry, Megan Hughes, I'm sure it would be. I'm happy. Let's keep Megan. Megan Gregson. Oh, I love it. Megan Gregson. Well done. Well, done. see, now you're on board with a fun game. Megan Gregson. Megan now Gregson. Now people say, oh, now, now you're cooking with gas. Now you're Megan Gregson. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. People will say, because she gets shit done. Yeah. Megan Gregson gets shit done. Megan Gregson, thank you so much thank for your you. support there. Megan Hughes, thank you. Oh, oh my God. This name is, oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it can't be real. I would like to thank from Cooks Hill in New South Wales. Paris drink water. Drink water. I'm afraid I've just encountered a perfect name. Yeah, we can't. No need to change. Paris drink water. Paris drink water. That is just fantastic. I'm sure the because when you join the Screen Actors Guild, I think a lot of the time people change their names or slightly because it's already taken. You can't have two people. add an initial or something. You can't have two people with the same name. Michael J. Fox. Yeah, on the Guild, especially with common names like that, for example. Yes, but I don't think there's going to be any Paris drink waters in the Guild. You know, no need to change that. Wait, you're you're not going to – but, I mean, that's the whole thing. No. All right. No, if no. If you had to change Cardio Day, you've got to change Paris drink water. Paris J. Drink water. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Fuck you, Matt, but we did change it. Yeah. I'm going to call her. Yeah, what would you say? Berlin Eat Food. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Per- uh, sorry? Berlin J Eat Food. Thank you. <laughs> now, now that's, that's an actor. Hollywood. That's an Academy Award winner. Put that on the statue for next year. Already inscribe it, I'm that confident. Yes. Wow. I'll even guess the title of the film. Yeah? The Punisher. That <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a porn. <laughs> yeah. yeah be- best porno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that confident. Make a statue with that category because it's happening. Wow. Okay, great. Well, well congratulations, uh, Berlin. Um, thank you so much, Berlin, Jay. <laughs> eat food. I would like to thank uh, from Civil East in Victoria, local, uh, Terry Nyehouse. <laughs> I've got it. Oh, I, lo- I already love Nyehouse. Terry Roundhouse. Ooh. Kick to the throat. Karate they, they... star? Terry Karate star. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're re- you're in. You'll take everything. Every answer is a good answer. <laughs> what about we change Terry Roundhouse? I love. But what about T dot R Roundhouse? T R Roundhouse. T R Roundhouse. Oh, yeah, get fucked! Fuck. Yeah. Fucking action yes. hero. Yes. Starring T R Roundhouse. Oh, she's a badass. Terry's gonna fuck some shit up. Yeah, that's great. Good for you, Terry. <laughs> I do love the name Terry as it is, but Terry. Terry's good. It is a T-R great name. T R okay. Roundhouse. All right. Well, finally, finally bring it home, Jess. Finally, I would like to thank from Bristol in the UK. Oh, great great city. Oh, in South Gloucestershire. Beautiful. Michael Apostolides. Ooh, that's another cracking name. Michael Apostolides. I don't know. I'm going to call him. I think Apostolides is a little too complicated for people. Yeah. What are you thinking, Matt? What are you thinking? I was. I like. I was going to say. What about changing? Jesus shitstorm. <laughs> Oh, wow. Great. Yes. Tear it down. <laughs> yes. Tear it down and build it back up. I like it. Even bigger yes. and better. Yes. Hazels. Keep nothing of the original. <laughs> Spelt Jesus, I'm imagining. Yes. Shitstorm. Shitstorm. Because you went Apostle. I think Apostle must have been what kicked me off there. Yep. And then you just threw in shitstorm. <laughs> I <laughs> wanted to go big. <laughs> I wanted to go Hollywood blockbuster. And you did. That's so big. You it did. Hurts. It's like Yahoo Serious, but way better. Yeah. Because that's Hollywood. Yes, obviously. exactly. <laughs> Yahoo Serious. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you, Jesus Shitstorm. Jesus J Shitstorm, if I may. And thank you to yes. all <laughs> our future Academy Award winning supporters. Yeah. It would be nice to have one Patreon supporter who's won an Academy Award. Just one. That's all I ask. That's all we ask. Even if it's for like 
Cinematography. Do you think because that's right. that would happen, right? Do, no, but do you think when you get too big for that stuff, you don't support lo- like small arts anymore? Right. You're like, I'm an Academy Award winner. Why would I pledge ten dollars a month to a Patreon? Oh, like it would be good if we had Steven Spielberg on board. Because he could afford Matt's more hero. than ten. He could afford more than ten bucks. Matt's favorite director. For the price of a tub of vanilla ice cream a month. <laughs> he could lose ten grand Australian. Uh big time. Like and not even realise it was gone. And that would make a huge difference to us. Yeah. Totally would. You we'd, know? We'd go to America next month if Steven Spielberg gave us ten ten grand. Probably not next month because the venues are hard to organise, but we'd go. We'd go, but With like Spielberg's cash. We probably need more than ten grand. No, no, for three flights, back and forth. We'd still sell tickets. Accommodation. The ten grand's just the buffer in case. Okay. From Spielberg. Okay, great. Also, can we get a photo with Spielberg? I don't see why not. I'm cool. assuming he's coming to our show if he's giving us ten grand. Oh man. Anyway. <laughs> ten grand. Anyway, thanks, Steven Spielberg. And thank you to all the Patreon people, including you, Stephen. We appreciate your support. We love you the most. <laughs> all right, we are going to go now and we will be back next week with another report. But until then, if you want to get in contact, all our social medias and stuff are in the description of this episode. You can always email us at any time with a suggestion. Well, actually, no, not a suggestion. Use the link for that. But uh, if you want to say hey, drop us a line. Uh, but until next week, we'll say thanks for listening and I will say goodbye. Later. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. It's not optional. You have to do it. (laughs) We used to go easy on it, but now you have to. Yeah. Yeah.